I am excited. I'm excited because we've got maths to do. Here we are looking at some of our circle theorems. And the first sort of circle theorems we're looking at today are four chord theorems. And this is from 10.2.6. A few basic definitions first. A chord, a line between any two points on the circumference of a circle. A straight line for that, fact, for that matter. The diameter. The longest chord you can draw in a circle, it's a chord that goes right through the middle and splits it in two. You already know about that. And we know a radius is a line from the center of a circle to the circumference. Sectors and arcs. Sectors are the bits that look like pieces of pizza or pie. Here's a large bit that looks like Pac-Man. The little bit there looks like a bit that's been taken out of a pie. Labeled red there, a minor arc. And the other side, the longer one, the major arc. Similarly, the small sector, if it's less than 180 degrees, minor sector. Greater than 180 degrees, major sector. Segments, rather than being cut off by two radii, which is the case of a sector, segments are cut off by a chord. The minor segment, the smaller one. Major segment, the larger one. A funny word that you will see a lot is subtended. Subtended means to be formed by, from the endpoints. So an angle could be subtended at the center of the circle from an arc, or in this example over here, an angle is subtended on the circumference by the chord. So it's subtended by the chord means it's made from the ends of the chord and it's on the circumference. It's, it's pretty easy and it's just a word that you'll get used to hearing a lot in the next few chapters. The four chord theorems, let's go with those. The first one, chords of equal length subtend equal angles at the center of the circle. So what they're saying is if these two chords are equal, then the angles at the center are equal. You can see over on the side here, I've got a little diagram. How would we prove that this is always true? Well, if I could draw straighter, it would help, but there's... Oh, I'm going to start that one again. Let's see if I can draw a little bit more accurately than that side. There's my center. Now this is chords of equal length, so I should be starting with a chord here, and I'm going to put another chord of equal length over there. Now how am I going to prove that they subtend equal angles at the center? Well, let's see what angle they would subtend. And it's reasonable that here I've got alpha, and there I've got beta. So they're different angles, but they're subtended by chords of equal length. What do I know about those black lines that I just drew in though, each one of those is a radius. What does that mean? That means that I have one, two, three, one, two, three congruent triangles because of equal sides. What do we know about congruent triangles? Congruent angles are equal. So therefore, alpha equals beta. And it's that easy to prove that chords of equal length subtend equal angles at the center of a circle. Let's move on to our next theorem, chord theorem 2. Chords of equal length are equidistant from the center of a circle. How am I going to prove they're the same distance? Well, let's draw our chords of equal length again. I did them in blue last time. Let's try and be consistent. Here's a chord. There's a, another chord of equal length. So I'll label them too as the center of the circle. How am I going to prove that they are equidistant? Well, let's put these radii in again. What do I find? Radius, 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 radius. What have we got in common? All the sides are equal. And I've, oh, that's right, I've turned the touch screen on again. I was trying to do something for education perfect. They now have touch screen recognition. And so that means I'm going to continually accidentally bump it until I remember to turn it off, which is not just the push of a button, so I'm going to persevere and try not to bump that menu too often. What I was saying was we have side, side, side congruence. Because they are congruent, those triangles are identical, which means the altitude, which is the height of the triangle, the perpendicular height, must also be equal. Therefore, those chords are equidistant from the center of the circle. Chord theorem two proved. Who thought that geometry would be hard? This is easy. 
chord theorem 3, the perpendicular from the center of a circle to the chord bisects the chord and the angle at the center subtended by the chord. Wow. Perpendicular from the center of a circle. All right. Well, here's a chord. Let's draw our chord in. Perpendicular means at right angles, so let's draw that in. Now, what am I trying to show? I'm trying to show that it will bisect the chord so that these two bits are equal. I can't assume it. I'm going to have to prove that. And that the angle at the sub center is subtended by the chord. It bisects the angle at the center. So what angle are they talking about? They're suggesting that those two angles at the top there will be equal. Let's put in what I know. This radius and that radius are the same length. Oh, and that line there is the same for the triangle on the left and the triangle on the right. So we've got a right angle, the hypotenuse, and one other side being equal in those two triangles. That satisfies one of our criteria for congruent triangles. These triangles are therefore congruent, which means corresponding angles are equal and corresponding side lengths are equal. So we've satisfied that one. Finally, chord theorem four, the perpendicular bisectors of every chord of a circle intersect at the center of a circle. Let's go ahead and draw a chord with a perpendicular bisector. And there we have it. Bisector, it's cut it in half. And perpendicular because it's at right angles to the chord. So now what we want to do is we want to start with the point O, the origin or the center of the circle. Oops, my finger touching it again. And let's construct the radii going out from the center. And what we're going to hope to show is that O must lie on that perpendicular bisector. Here I've got a radius, so the radii, each radii is equal to the other one. A right angle, this line from O to the point that is the midpoint, the, perp the bisector, so that's the midpoint of that chord, must meet the chord. Now what I want to show is that they have to be right angles. How can I go about that? Well, I've got a common side here. I've got a common side there. O-N. That's an N. And I've got a common side there. So we have side, side, side congruence. Now, because of that, the two angles uh, made from O to M, this angle on the left there, and I'm going to use red for the one on the right. They're on a straight line, so they must add up to 180 degrees. But what else do we know? Well, they're corresponding angles, so they must be equal. So they must indeed be right angles. Which means that point O must lie on the perpendicular bisector of that chord. Now, really, chord theorem 3 and chord theorem 4 are just reading it the opposite way to each other. One, the perpendicular from the center of the circle to the chord bisects the chord. And the other one saying, if you have a perpendicular bisector, it will pass through the center. But why is this useful? Well, the little example they give down the bottom there is constructing perpendicular bisectors of any two chords will locate the center of a circle. So if ever I have a circle, and I can take any two chords, if I find the midpoint of each, cut them in half, and then draw it at right angles, I will be able to locate the center of the circle with ease. That's why it's useful. Now, that's, those proofs are pretty challenging. Um, you should be able to follow them. We wouldn't necessarily expect you to be able to come up with them straight away on your own. But what you'll find is when you go to the actual questions in the textbook, it's really just using those um, theorems, which becomes pretty quick and easy. So it shouldn't take you too long to get through the work for this exercise. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.